This week's episode is sponsored by the Brilliant Futures Institute. 85% of people listen to the entire podcast. What is so powerful about being on demand is they are listening to you when it's most convenient for them and they're getting your latest content and they're digesting most of it. One of the reasons we want to do a podcast is because it separates us from everybody else in our area as someone who's producing content. And the type of people that produce content are people who know what they're talking about. Welcome to the Preeminence Podcast. You cannot be a courageous leader if you're not vulnerable. Your legacy is every life you've touched. The only thing that changes our life long term is when we raise our standards. Now is the time to take risk. The way it's always been done isn't necessarily the way it should be done. What is your dream? What do you think 2050, 2100 is going to look like? The most incredible sort of mystery, I think, is now the question of what comes next. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Welcome to the Preeminence Podcast. I'm your host, Matthew J. Peters. Visit preeminence.tv to learn more about how to create a preeminent presence for your business, organization, or personal brand. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or just ask Alexa to play the Preeminence Podcast. Thank you, everyone, for coming out today. Uh, today, we're talking about podcasting and starting your own podcast. Now, we have people that are all over the map when it comes to technology, the use of technology. Some people are just starting out. Some people are already uh, creating podcasts. Um, we have Nick here, Nick Choate, who is a, uh, an expert when it comes to podcasting. So uh, he's a great person to ask more questions of. Um, let me just find out from you, what is, it, is the most interesting thing about podcasting to you? If I get some... Okay, yeah. The phenomenon of it, what else? I love it that you don't have to be seen. Yes. You can do podcasts and all they hear is your voice. You don't have to look good, you can be in your pajamas, you can, you know, I think that's better. Because a lot of people love to present what they know, but they don't necessarily want people to see them. <laughs> yeah, so. absolutely. Yep, I've had so many people in the past who I'm showing them how to make a video and they say they have a, a face for radio. Right. And so that's a way to kind of like be in the behind the scenes. And this is a way for you to still have a very powerful, present voice in the marketplace without having to have your face out there. Any other ones? Content on demand as opposed to the webinar. Mm-hmm. So I can listen to it whenever it's most convenient for me. And another thing we'll find is, is that one of the reasons why it's becoming so popular is very granular. I can listen to a podcast exactly about what I'm interested in. I can listen to it whenever I want, and I can be doing other things while I'm learning, while I'm being entertained, unlike watching a video, unlike a live stream, where a live stream you have interaction live, but you've got to be kind of like tied to it. All right, so I, I, I have a bunch of slides, but I'm going to tailor this to us and where we want to take it. Um, <clears throat> we're going to go, about, go through what is podcasting, how to position yourself as an expert, basic tech and smartphone apps to get started and how to technically record your first podcast episode. Now that last one, it can get a little technical, so we'll see just where we want to take that. Um, what is podcasting? We kind of talked about it right now. It's, it's audio or video, and sometimes you can even do PDFs, like on um, iTunes, you can do PDFs on demand. So it's content that comes out regularly. So you can have a, a daily podcast, you can have a podcast that comes out three times a week, one time a week. But you, if you go beyond that, it's not like you're doing enough. So some people will do it once a month, but it's really there's just so much quiet time in there that you kind of lose your audience in the meantime because they are hungry for the kind of content that you are providing. The shows are automatically downloaded. They don't have to keep on going back somewhere else to, uh, to get that new content from you. Before I go too much further than this, how many of you are listening to podcasts now on any kind of device? Okay, about, about half. You can see here it's playable on smartphones, tablets, PC, and uh, Amazon Alexa. Matter of fact, the first, I, I talked to Alexa yesterday to play my podcast. It was really cool. You, you set up the app, and you just click on saying, yes, I want this app installed, and then you can start talking to it and say, play this podcast or that podcast. Now, out of this, this is from Edison uh, Research. The biggest thing I see here is that last number, 85% of people listen to the entire podcast. Now, if you're thinking about people staying on your webinars, it, about a third of the people that 
say they're, they're gonna show up to your webinar, actually show up, like 30% is average, and then people stay for about 30% of it. If they're not entertained, or it was not the best timing for them, they gotta go pick up the kids from school, or it's whatever it is, you know, start dinner. Um, this is what, it, what is so powerful about being on demand is they are listening to you when it's most convenient for them, and they're getting your latest content, and they're digesting most of it. Sometimes they won't hear your last bit of your call to action to subscribe and stuff, and we'll talk about that because we want to make sure people know what their next steps are with you if they don't listen to the very end. Uh, the biggest, the fastest growing crowd is the 25 to 54-year-old men. So 25 to 54-year-old in general, which is, which is great because those are, those are people who have disposable income. They're interested in uh, products and services that are bettering their business or their health or their relationships. Um, in general, what kind, of, uh, what kind of genres would you be, you be uh, creating content in? Real estate? Real estate? Personal growth. Personal growth, okay. Historic preservation. Oh, okay. Historic preservation. Very cool. Any others? Uh, Nick, yours is on business advice? Yeah, digital, digital business, yeah. Okay, digital business. What other uses? For me, it would be updates on the tax laws. Okay, tax laws? Mm hmm. <laughs> All right, so um, now how do you position yourself as an expert? One of the reasons we want to do a podcast is because it separates us from everybody else in our, in our area as someone who's producing content. And the type of people that produce content are people who know what they're talking about. So it used to be that um, we would write a book. Let's write a book, and that's going to set me apart from my competition because my competition doesn't have, they're not creating blogs, they're not creating videos on YouTube, they don't have a book out yet. The great thing about creating podcasts is you're creating verbal content. You have audio. You can use it for your podcast. You also can send it to a website, and they will transcribe it. Now you have, podcast, or you have uh, blog posts. You also have social media content. You can take little bits of what you said. It's like, dang, that was really good. I should make that into a meme. And you can either make it into a meme or someone else make that into a meme for you. And if you structure it, and I've, I've actually helped people do this when we did... Uh, anywhere from 50 to 70 videos in a day, we structured it so they're speaking their book. If you think about your book, maybe has 12 chapters, and you have to talk about four subjects in each, ch each chapter, that's 52, uh, 48, what is that? 48 uh, weeks of content, but you could also be speaking out your book. That's another way to do it. So I like to repurpose, so I'm not doing the same thing multiple times. So you want to make sure that um, you show, you're showing up as the authority. You want to tell people what this podcast is about and who you are in the marketplace and why they should listen to you. Uh, clear branding, beautiful graphics. I'll show you. It, it pays to go a little bit beyond the Fiverr where they kind of just splash something up there to, to really showcase you as an expert and set yourself apart from uh, the other podcasts out there. Professionally done intro and outro. Uh, you want to make sure you have a call to action in the beginning and in the end, and I'll show you what that can look like. And then fill out your show description. Anytime you have content on uh, something like the speaker is what I'm going to be showing you how to use here, you want to make sure that you fill out everything. So they say, what are your tags or your keywords or what is your description? You want to fill out everything so they have as much information to share with Google and other search engines about you. And then the other thing about being seen as an expert is you want to be consistent. If to begin with, you're just like, you know, I'm going to try this thing. I'm going to do one every two weeks one every week or something, and just make sure you do that. So it's Monday at midnight, mine's going to go up. People just rely on, like, they wake up and it's downloaded. The latest one on Monday is downloaded. My kids know YouTube channels. They're like, oh, Wednesday, such and such. They yeah. Know. Yeah, my kids too. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> They've watched so much YouTube. But at least they're learning things. Uh, they have the kids' YouTube. Telling them what to do next, having an action step. Uh, who tells other people what to do next but uh, someone who's a trainer, a teacher, a mentor, a coach, something like that. When you say, here's what you can do with the information just learned, it just sets you in a, apart from someone just saying, just throwing out information. Interviewing well-known and respected people raises you to the level that they're at. So uh, a great thing to do is interview somebody and ask, who do you know that you think would be great on this podcast? Could you do an introduction? And now you're in their world of people that they, they look up to and the people that they're connected with. And uh, that's why it, you ask, like um, David Letterman, he's back on TV now, but before... Who was the star? Was it David Letterman or was it who he was interviewing? You know, so he has Tom Cruise on there or whoever it was. Now they both are raised because he had the platform, he had the eyeballs there, and he brings the people on, so it was a win-win. 
So when I'm saying like uh, do a uh, uh, your thumbnail or your the image for your show, you want to you want to put time into it. And if it costs you a hundred dollars, it's worth it because this is your branding for for your business and showing people that I have a premium product. I, I, you know, they're not it's not a Fiverr thing; it's just kind of just thrown up there. So I'm going to show you some apps that you can use. Uh, podcast content hosting. Uh, when you are using iTunes, iTunes is not hosting that content. It's saying we're going to point to a file where this is hosted. So if you're starting out, I highly recommend Spreaker.com. I've done research, and for me, that for $4.99 a month, you get 100 hours, 100 hours of, of saving content on there. Now, if you're going to use the phone method, um, and if there's anyone here that wants the, uh, the slides, just give me your business card, and I'll send that to you either today or tomorrow. Yeah. Um, especially when I go down to the end, it, it, I show you the step-by-step stuff. Uh, podcasts, so you want to get Spreaker.com. So if you're going to be doing this on your smartphone, which many of you may want to do when you're just starting out because it, it's literally you don't have to get any other equipment, uh, there's Voice Recorder Pro 7, which is free. They just have a little ad at the bottom, but you can see. Let me see if I... I'll, I'll show you it in just a moment here. But Voice Recorder Pro 7. And then for your show, Spreaker Studio. Spreaker Studio is an app on here that's free that just connects with Spreaker, and I'm going to show you how to use it. It's, it's very cool. For your intro, if you have what you want someone to say for your intro, there's people who do professional radio intros for like 5 or $10. Uh, I'll just stay away from it sounding too wild uh, because it, it, it can get a little annoying after a while if people hear you know, 10 of your episodes. Keep it short. Don't make it too long. And then... Uh, the transcription, I was actually turned on to this by um, Nick here, temi.com. For the longest time, I was paying $1.10 per minute to have someone physically listen to my videos and type it out. Temi is all AI, isn't it? It's yep, just it's all automatic. Yeah. It's all automatic. So you upload it, and about 10 to 50, 15 minutes, yeah. 10 to 15 minutes you've got you know, your well, podcast. Is that accurate? No. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you have an accent like mine, it's not as accurate as, say, Matthew. So if, with the Midwest. <laughs> If you have a microphone, you're speaking into it in a quiet room, be then you don't have the noise around you. It'll be really, it's actually pretty good. And then I'm just, I'm just correcting my English rather than, <laughs> than anything <laughs> else. Editing, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but that's 10 cents a minute. So instead of a dollar or a dollar 10 cents a minute, it's 10 cents a minute, which is crazy. It's so cheap. So Temi is that one. Now, there's a, different approaches to podcasting. I, the one I would recommend that everybody does eventually is just focus on your content. So what you can do is, the, the easiest way to do it is use the Voice Recorder Pro for free. You're recording on here, and then you send the file to someone and let them do the stuff. Because otherwise, it, you can, for free, learn how to do it yourself. And I'm going to show you how to do it yourself so you can do that. Um, so you're learning the software, you're learning how to syndicate it and everything. And then there's the done with you where you actually have someone create a template, and then you just use the template, and then you can put your content in there. So they kind of like helped you set it up. And at that point, now you can go out and do it as much on your own as you want. I like that one just because you're empowered to do it with a professional's help. Now you can do it as much as you want. Uh, and then the done, for, uh, the done for you, like I said. So uh, Spreaker.com syndicates it out automatically. And they're just reference, they're just like links out to uh, Spreaker. So you have to have somewhere to host your audio. And I found Spreaker is the best one. I don't get any money for <laughs> mentioning them 20 times a day, but... But uh, you can see some of the places it puts it out is iTunes is the biggest one, Google Play for people with Android devices, Stitcher, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio. Uh, a lot of people listen to iHeartRadio in their car. Uh, what it allows people to do is listen to radio stations pretty much anywhere in the U.S. I don't know if it's outside the U.S., but the radio stations are live. So I can listen to, I'm from Madison, Wisconsin, so I can listen to Madison Radio here if I want to using iHeartRadio. Uh, it also uh, puts out to Twitter. And then I just had mentioned I listened to it on Amazon Alexa by just speaking to it. Now, if everybody know who Gary Vaynerchuk is here? He had a book. It was called Crush It uh, about seven years ago. He just came out with yesterday, the day before, Crushing It. It was a follow-up. And he said, voice is the future, not only because voice, I can listen to something and be uh, driving my car, working out, working on the house or whatever, but also voice command. You're, everybody within the next few years is going to be able to just talk to your house. You want the lights to come on. You want to listen to something. You want whatever it is. Order something. Order more laundry detergent, and it's ordered. So 
if you are on Spreaker, you are an app that's enabled on Amazon. And I, they said Google Home, and I don't, understand, I don't know Google Home yet, but I imagine it's the same thing. And then YouTube, I'll actually show you here. Now you're thinking, now, how do I get on YouTube? Yeah, and so you can actually just have a webcam going while you're recording. But if you don't like to do that, the great thing about Spreaker is it actually just makes a file that looks like that. So you have a file. It is on YouTube. No one's going to sit there and just stare at that. But all your keywords, all, everything that you, had, that you had put in your description, your keywords, is they put it right into YouTube. So that's a nice thing to have. Spreaker is $4.95 a month. Yeah. Spend the it's, five bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skip a coffee one day. So you can see here, yesterday I released my 100th episode. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the, the thing about that was, is I was, someone gave me the challenge to create content every day. And so doing it every day, not necessarily always in the studio over here. We have a uh, podcasting studio. If you haven't seen it, I'll show you that afterwards. Then I would do things like this. I'd have my laptop and I have this little microphone here. It's really cool. Microphone, if you want to have a better quality sound. And uh, so you can do it for, for interviewing other people or just for yourself. And you can clip it on here. It's $60. It's a Samsung. Or you can set it on a desk like that. And it also has a thing for a microphone stand so you can set it up. Personally, I like standing when I do mine because I have more energy. But when you're recording, you can use your iPhone or what have you. You can, you can do that there. Let's see here. iTunes is going to take whatever description you have in Spreaker, and once you change it, if once I changed that graphic there, I had a graphic there that was different about five days ago. I changed it on Spreaker, and I changed the description, and everything was, up, was changed everywhere. So sometimes I would, I would put up my podcast, and then I'd listen to it when I go work out in the morning, and I'll do this. Um, I'll I have a mistake and go, and I start again, and so I'm looking for that spike in the file, and sometimes I missed it. So I'll be listening to it, and I'll be talking, I'll stop, and then I'll keep going in the podcast. So fortunately, it allows you to go in, replace the file, and you don't lose listens. You don't have to delete it. You can just replace that file. So it's really nice, and it repopulates everywhere. Mm -hmm. Especially if something new happens, like you can add, can you add? I think you can append it. Yeah, yeah so that's something. And you, there's some simple editing where you can cut it, too, in Spreaker. I haven't messed with that. I just replaced the whole file. Now, if you want to see what... This right here is Adobe Audition. This, if you have the Adobe Suite, this is already included. So if you're more technically minded, you can use something like this. But when you're just starting out, this looks really complicated. It's a lot of cuts, a lot of edits. I interviewed someone, did a great interview, but I want to just cut out all the spaces because he's very like, uh, he's a, uh, a sage, kind of like a shaman type person. So there's a lot of long pauses. So in a podcast, I was like cutting out all these long pauses to keep it moving. I, I put an extra amount of time in the intro because it's going to be heard every time. And I want to make sure that I have my call to action in there. So when people listen to the show and they really like it, but they just don't, they don't need to hear the end of the show every time, they'll hear it at the beginning, which is to download the, the free, free report. So your podcast is really going to have three different parts. It's going to have your intro and your content and your outro. So here's, and I'm just going to give you a sample of what it can look like. And if I did mine, it, it says, Welcome to the Preeminence Podcast. I'm your host, Matthew J. Peters, the founder of Ascend. Be sure to grab your ultimate guide to preeminence at preeminence.tv. Today we're talking about how to create a podcast. So tune in, listen up, and get ready to take a focused action on your message, mission, and presence to create accelerated results starting right now. Yeah. You say it slower than that. Yeah. Actually, I say it faster. You just slow down yourself. I say it faster in the show because in this app, I put the intro in there with the music, and then it ramps up and you know, it gets loud. And I've just learned to say it at a certain speed, and then I turn off my mic and I hear it. That's, I've just got the timing down. But the thing is, people are going to hear it a lot, and so I want to keep it short. Now, for my new one, the intro is, is almost a minute, and I have like famous people talking in, and I'm, I'm setting up the person who I'm interviewing as on the same level as Brene Brown, Oprah Winfrey, Tony Robbins, uh, Elon Musk, uh, Steve Jobs, um, Sarah Blakely, those people are in the intro, and then my guest comes on. So it kind of like raises them to a, a place of authority. I already think they're authority, but I'm, I'm also letting it go longer because I'm only doing one a week now. People are going to be listening to it less. 
So these are the, some key things I like to put in the beginning is welcome to, make sure you name your podcast right at the beginning. Who are you? So you tie your name with the business and then your title of the organization, your business name. And then what are they, what, what's their next step? You're doing this podcast to get yourself out there, but what else can they do with you? Do you have like a, a white paper, a free report, a, a recording of a, a talk you did, a recorded webinar, something? Like, share, subscribe. What's that? Like, share, subscribe if you don't have anything else. Yeah, like, share, subscribe. Definitely you want to ask people to share it. That's one way they can spread it. And then we have, say, today, I, I like to do this because it, it, it differentiates me than, from other people is I'm going to tell you what we're talking about today, and I do it live. That's why I can say it so fast as I've done it over 100 times because I've missed it a few times. But the thing is, I just learn how to say it so much, and every time it's today we're talking about, and then that's, people know that's live. If you want to just record the whole intro and have your call to action and everything in there, then it's much easier. You don't have to do that every time. And then uh, tell them what you want them to do next. So what, what states do you want them to? So sit back, relax, and take a listen for the next 10 minutes or what have you for to the um, episode. Is that clear enough? Or just, some, just a little bit of a framework for you. And if none of that or some of that works for you, just use what is used, makes the sense for you. Any questions so far? So I, one of the first things I like to do in the podcast content is just restate what I'm going to be talking about. Go into the subject, and then it can be anywhere from like three minutes, 90 minutes. I was doing short form, which were... Um, anywhere from about three to four minutes to 12 minutes. My longest was 18 minutes, but it was short form, meaning just I'm just going to do one of these a day quick. But there's some people who have a lot of content. And you'll see people like Gary Vaynerchuk who will have content every day, and he'll have something that's a five-minute just inspirational thing, and then he talked to Toyota for an hour, and then that's tomorrow, the next day. And then the next day he just has some... I don't know, a, a discussion in his office with somebody who came in, and he just puts that up. So he just wants to put fresh content out, and he doesn't really care if it's 90 minutes or if it's three minutes. When you're getting started, is there a suggested amount of you know, time that you're putting out? Is 10 minutes a good time when you're getting, really getting started so you're trying to build your, your following? Does it matter? I'll tell you what I did is I started as easy as I could because it had been a long time since I'd been out and, like, sharing my thoughts and ideas with people. So I've, I thought three to eight minutes. I can shoot for three, and if I got extra inspired and went to five or something, I felt okay about that. But if you're starting out people don't know you and you're just talking without a structure that you're not teaching, then it could be like, how long, is, how long are they going on here? But if it's short, it's like, okay, I like that one. I'll listen to tomorrow's. And then you can feel it out, find out what people like and what they don't like. So one of the things I like to end with, if you're a coach, a mentor, someone who you want to be seen as an expert in something, is give them something to think about, consider, an action step, an assignment. How, how can you apply this today? One of, uh, the, the guy that gave me this um, kind of told, told us that we should create content every day, his name's Garrett J. White, and he will talk about five to ten minutes or so. He's just in his car driving and talking like this, he will tell you what to do next, and he memorizes like a minute of content is his, the closing. But um, always giving people what to do next. So if you're looking at Voice Recorder Pro, the thing I like about this the most is if you see in the middle, it has that thing that says VU. That's, that's going to show you if you're actually capturing the audio or not. If that needle is going like this, and if it's going into the red and staying in the red, you know it's distorting and it's not going to be pleasant for people. So one of the things that I would recommend is, yes, so what I would recommend is that when you are starting out, get something where you can tell that it's being recorded, and if it goes into the red, it's distorting it, and you're going to probably lose that content. But if you see it's, it's not, it's just bouncing just a little teeny bit, people can't hear you. You're too far away from the microphone. Now, if you look at the furthest one, the greatest thing I see as an asset for this Voice Recorder Pro is you, when you're done with it, you can send it to... Let's see, Dropbox, uh, iCloud, SoundCloud. You can send it to Bluetooth via device. You can upload it to a website, Facebook, post it to YouTube. It's, it, and it has like six more. So once you're done with that content, you can send it somewhere to somebody to work on or send it to your laptop or desktop so you can work on it. And it's not like working on a, a ship in a bottle, you know, trying to do little tiny things on your phone. 
Now this is what Spreaker looks like. The, the great thing about Spreaker is it has these, if you see these little circles over here, so this is a soundboard where I can put sound effects in there. I can put, a, today is sponsored by such and such. You don't have to say it every time. You just touch that and uh, you can set up, they call them effects. But I have the intro in mind here. Where is it? So it's an app. If you have Spreaker, it automatically you can connect with your account here. And uh, I'm going to turn off the microphone. But you can see on this one, you might be able to see the, the little lights here at the bottom. When I'm talking, they're going up and down. So you, you have a way, so I can talk like this. Welcome to the Preeminence Daily Podcast. I'm your host, Matthew J. Peters, founder of Ascend. Be sure to grab your ultimate guide to preeminence at preeminence.tv. Today we're talking about, it wasn't that fast when I started. I, I had to cut it up so many times. But so I can start that, and then at the end, when I, I know that I have about eight seconds, the music's coming in, I know I'm wrapping up the show, and I, I'm waiting for my cue. Thanks so much. I look forward to talking with you next week. This daily podcast is all about you becoming the preeminent voice in your marketplace. So it has my call to action. I don't have to say that part every time. What, what's that? So when you tap that, it's playing the music underneath what you're saying, what you're recording? Yes, but my microphone, I did that so you could hear it. When I'm doing this live, I'm hitting this, welcome to the pre Stated Podcast, blah, blah, blah. I, I can't hear it. That's why I had to time it and say it's a certain speed. Because when I'm, I need to know when it's going to be out, then I turn that up, and then I hear the music ramp up. And if I miss that, then i got to do it again. So it's, it's super simple. You see the big record button up there? Here's your steps. You hit record. It's going to say, do you want to go live right now and stream online live, or do you want to just record it offline? So I hit offline. All right, now I'm recording. I can just start talking. And then when I'm done, I hit pause and stop, and it's, it's done. And this is connected directly with Spreaker. So I just upload it to Spreaker. I can put my tags in there, my description of the show, name the show, and where do I want it to syndicate out to. Yep. If you want to have an intro and outro and do it the easiest way possible on your phone, record your intro with the words in it. That way you don't have to time and everything. That's Because I did 100 of them I wanted to experiment with and stuff. But ha- if you have your intro recorded with you talking in it, you can listen to it. And as it starts to fade down, then you turn your mic on and start talking. And then you know if when you hit your outro, you have three seconds, five seconds, or whatever, and then you're out. And then turn your mic off. Let it run out completely. And when it's done, then you hit pause, stop. Now you have a completely produced show. I'll, I'll tell you, it probably took about 50 episodes before I felt like I could do that because I would screw up and I'd want to be, make it sound perfect so I'd do all the cuts. It went from spending, let's see, I'd do five podcasts in four hours to uh, doing a podcast in about 10 minutes because I just I got over not being perfect with my speaking and I didn't do the clap and have to go back and find the stuff. So the, the, if, you're a, if you speak publicly already, you probably will have an easier time at this than I did, speaking into the microphone and just not worry about cutting stuff out. Now, the outro, that's where you want to make sure you let people know to subscribe if you want to thank them and ask them to share it. If they got some good quality information out of it, if they learned something, if they found it entertaining, share it with friends. And then also get them back to your website. A lot of times people don't ask ask listeners or YouTube viewers to go back to a website. The thing with YouTube and Facebook and Twitter is you don't own those. So at any time, YouTube could say, uh, yeah, we don't like the content on here. Turn off your channel. And your thousand subscribers or whatever are no longer, you have no access to it. So once you get people over to your website, now you can ask them to opt in to a free report. What would what be something that they could get in real estate from you? Market analysis. Okay. Yeah, your free market analysis, and that's for the local market here in. Yes, and, and then we also do analytics on different areas. I mean, as far as. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, are any of you f- seeing how you can use this to develop content? Mm-hmm. You can. This is your blog, too. You just. I mean, if you talk for 10 minutes and you upload it to Temi, that costs you a dollar to have it transcribed out. Now you're just going through it, erasing this, changing some words around, and now you have a a structure for your blog. So if you're thinking about blogging, but you didn't want to sit down a typewriter and do it, this is a way for you to just talk through it. Ask yourself a question. What are the frequently asked questions? 
what are the should ask questions? The should ask questions are going to position you in a way that, oh, I never thought of that. But this is what you, if you want to sell your house, here's the 10 questions you must ask your real estate agent. Five of them are the common ones, and five are the ones that you do specifically in your office. Okay? I just want to get back to filling out all the information. Fill out the information for your show. Upload an image for your, your show, as well as you can upload images for each episode. So if you look at your show here, it's going to say, what's the title of your show? And you can pick the, the URL you want. You upload some of your images, and it says, what's the description of your show? What category it is in? It's going to make it so much easier for people to find you. So if I go to the shows, I just recorded the episode. You'll see I have the name of the episode. I like to put the number in there. I use three digits because that gives me up to 1,000. So give credit where credit is due, and then that's actually also the URL. Visibility, I want to make sure it's public. We don't want it to be <laughs> private or limited access. Back here. Yeah. <laughs> Now, you'll notice something with the description. The description, it says, starts with visit http colon slash slash preeminence.tv. What happens is when this shows up on uh, a lot of different platforms, that's going to be a hyperlink. So it'll be an active hyperlink. Make sure you put the HTTP. And I always start with visit or another action, action word, that. So visit this at the top. And then it says, if you have any questions we'd like to have answered, email me at mattisend.net. Share your questions right there. So I'll just copy that. And then when I do the next one, I just paste it in and then I type in what's different about this one. This episode is when it comes to credit, some can be free to give it, but hesitant to take it. And then at the bottom, we have our tags. And if it's explicit content, I only had one. <laughs> and then uh, publish date. The great thing about publish date is you can have, uh, you can set it out for days in advance. And I, I recommend that you put your, um, you have it go live at midnight. I found that I have people when I was doing uh, other content, I had people in Europe that would, would be watching my videos and so forth, be on my webinars in Europe. So when it was at midnight, it, for me, it's like, what, 6 a.m. or something in, uh, in the middle of Europe. They're getting it in the morning, so when they're going out to walk the dog, to go work out on their way to work, whatever, I'm catching them at that time. Because if I put it out at 6 a.m. where it's like convenient for me, now I'm missing those people who have already gone through that part of their day. So since I was doing it daily, it made sense to me, but it may, may or may not make sense to you. Now, I'd like to get into some of the things that you would like to use it for, and we'll, kind of, we'll go like a question and answer, but also I want to make it so those of you who want to do this actually can like do this tomorrow, tomorrow yeah. <laughs> Literally, it's, it's going to Spreaker, signing up. It's free to sign up, but I recommend you just go to the $5 a month. Get the app, and then you can record it and play with it, and then just make it private. And then you can listen to it, get feedback from me or other people. And then you can say, am I ready to do this? What, what, should, I do for my, what should I do for my intro? Um, when you bring people to your website, if you bring them to your homepage, give them something to do on your homepage. So like a lot of things will be opt-ins to something. Email for this thing. Now you have a way to follow up with people. Because I may have hundreds of people that have subscribed to here, but I don't know who they are. i got to get them over to my property somewhere. So get your .com. Um, if you have a, a .com or a .net or something where you have lots of things going on, you can always have a secondary. For, for mine, it's a send.net, but I have preeminence.tv that now goes to a page on my site that is going to take them to this one thing. So you can get this guide and listen to more of these episodes on your favorite platform. But basically, if you send people to your website and they're searching around, where is this thing that they said I could get? You don't want that. So make it very apparent on your homepage or send them to a specific page. Like I could have done, that would have been bad, ascend.net forward slash preeminence. Not only do most people don't know how to spell preeminence, but they wouldn't know how I spell ascend, A-S-Y-N-D. So it would just been too confusing. Yes? When you're doing interviews, do you typically give the people the questions in advance so they can be prepared, or do you like it to be very spontaneous and just let, just let it flow. I usually start with the ideas of the questions and then it goes somewhere completely different. You can do a lot of research uh, on a, an individual and think you have your questions laid out, but you got to go where the interview is going. So I, I am in the process of in post-production of a documentary film, and I interviewed all these people around 
the world. And I thought I knew what the conversation was going to be. But they're the experts. And so when I got into it, I'm like, these questions are irrelevant. You know? So I just sent something to an individual uh, today. And I said, here are the questions I have. We'll probably not use many of these. Because I'm going to go where they're taking it. Because by doing that, you're going to get something completely new and fresh instead of something that's going to sound canned. And you were just talking about this. How did you make the transition to this thing? You know? And when people do that, it seems a little awkward. But if the more organic it is, the more people are going to feel that. This is new to me, and I've got a couple of ideas. You know, what happens if you want to stay in just one lane, or can you venture off in two different things? Let's say sports in one, something else, business in the other, where they might not marry each other, and it would be awkward to put them together. Would you do two separate, or would you just say stay in one lane? I like the idea. I was just talking to someone the other day. It's like stay with just one thing. Because if you get known for the thing you don't like as much, you're known as two things, people will be like, well, which are you? And so if, as far as being set up as setting yourself up as the expert, uh, I have a, the guy that I'm interviewing, actually, he has a snowboarding video out in Colorado, did really well, and he's getting all these views on YouTube. But what he does is he reviews video equipment. So people are like, why are you doing this one on snowboarding? Well, they're using all the video equipment. So they're reaching people who loves snowboarding and might use the new GoPro or the whatever the camera is like the GoPro. So he was able to bridge the two together. And if you can bridge it and you have your core or your hub and then you have the spokes off the hub or all the different things you can talk about. Like for, for me, the preeminence podcast is pursue excellence, pursue mastery in one thing. And then what are the things around that I can talk about? What are the different topics? And they all point back to the one thing. Because if you give someone a call to action that's unrelated to what you just talked about, it, it's a, there's a disconnect. But there's ways you can bridge it. Just make sure that people take that leap with you. Yeah, you're welcome. I have a question. Yeah. Um, are there any big no-nos of things not to do? Anything that's going to have the FCC knocking on my door? Or... Um, you know, the, for each industry, like if you're talking about tax law or you're talking about law in general, or insurances, I know you have a lot of compliance issues. You may have similar in real estate. So if you can talk about experiences, things you've learned along the way, you're probably going to be speaking to uh, home buyers or home sellers. Maybe th- or both or either one? Both, but okay. probably gearing it. Yeah, probably more towards sellers. I think it, you're going to be pretty safe. Obviously, there's, are you with an agency? Mm-hmm. So your agency probably has some things about what you can say and can't say about in your content online. Or you might be able to push the envelope a little bit. Okay, that's good. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah. Um, so a couple of things is I know a lot of people will use copyrighted music in their podcasts and they're getting away f- with it. But I, I know that in YouTube you'll be flagged. And in Facebook they're actually taking down videos. that ha- they Like I was just doing a meditation and there was this music in the background. I was like, yeah, but it picks that up and it knows it's copyrighted. It'll take your video down. So stay away from copyrighted music. You can go to a... a uh, the ones I use is uh, from Pond5, P-O-N-D, and then the number 5.com. And you pay anywhere from 10 to $40 for a song, and that's yours. You can cut it up. You can use it for multiple videos. Um, so it's just the way you own it. And the other thing is, is the no-no is don't be when you're not consistent. So just when people are expecting that next podcast to come out, just be there for them. Do you use a subscription at all for, for your podcast, for example, if someone is... You know, you want to get their email or some people charge to do training online. Mm-hmm. Do you do something like that too? Yeah, I recommend it. Like, yeah. So that's a start. the podcast is the start of my online funnel. So I give them something for free in the thing that says, you know, book a call with me or purchase my book for $10. And I do like a steps of t- uh, 10. So I have a book for $10 and I have something for $97 and $1,000, $10,000 and so forth. But start with the free thing so they get to know you like you and trust you. Mm-hmm. What do you have for $10,000? Oh, video services. Cool. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's all right. <laughs> it's none of my business. No, no, no. If you want to know like the types of things I do and I've done, it's uh, ascend, A-S-Y-N-D dot net. Yeah. A-S-Y-N-D. <laughs> Were you speaking to talk about the microphones also? Oh, yeah. I can. So this one right here is the blue microphone is the blue snowball so blue is the name brand you can get this at walmart or target for 49 dollars. it's a great mic they actually have one that's called the blue yeti which a lot of people use but when you put them side by side the blue yeti is anywhere from 
$150 to $200, depending on what model you get, most people can't tell the difference. And this is something, you know, you can, you can it's pretty compact. And this one is a Samsung microphone. That they're, and these are USB. They're not wireless. I just don't have the cords in there. Uh, this one is also USB. It has different mic patterns you can flip on here. I like the fact how compact it is, and it's actually pretty good quality compared to this. So it's a little less, it's a little more tinny. Um, the bigger the microphone, they have a bigger diaphragm on there. You get lower end, so you have more of like the radio voice. So if you want to go all out, I recommend getting the Blue Yeti, and they have different ones there. So that's going to be $150 to $200. This one, about $50. Bucks. This one's $60. If you want to use your, your laptop and keep it really simple, I'd recommend this setup. Best Buy has a variety of them, and they're all available on Amazon as well. What are you using now to record your podcast, not, not Spreaker? Uh, I'm, I'm using this in the podcast studio now that I'm doing the long form and doing, uh, I'm doing video interviews over Zoom. Zoom is more stable than Skype. And uh, I use this. So my end, I can control the audio quality. On their end, it depends what they're using. So I ask them if they have a high-quality mic to use it, but I really can't tell them what to, to do. Um, the gentleman I'm recording tomorrow, his name's Sean Cannell, and he's one of the top YouTubers, and he has an amazing setup. So I know I'll get a really good quality file from him. So when you're interviewing people, the best is to control the environment and have them come to you if it's possible, or you go to them. When it's online, it can be, be choppy, bad audio quality. Um, so if you're just starting out, you can do as little as have the Spreaker app here and set it on a table that you're not bumping the table and just talk across it, talk nice and loud. Yeah. So the objective of this is to see that it's show you that it is doable. You can start with just your phone, and you can syndicate off to, um, I think, eight different sites by just uploading it and just making sure your accounts are connected. It's incredible what you're able to do. You can do as many as you want, 100 hours for a year or whatever. When you're doing three to 12-minute podcasts, you can do an awful lot in 100 hours. If it, anything sounded too complicated, there's probably an easier way to do it. I just recommend starting with your iPhone if the other stuff seemed too complicated. Do you do yours all in a row and then set it up so that every day they're Yeah, it depends on how disciplined I was. <laughs> so the ideal was I came in here on a Sunday and recorded right. seven. Right. Um, when I was traveling for the holidays, I was literally like, and I have a video on my, my um, Instagram account of I'm at a cabin in the North Woods and it's 16 below zero, and I'm in the closet of my, my parents' uh, cabin closet, and I just did it right there with this, with this setup, just wherever you are. Yeah. And I do this now like if it's 10 o'clock at night, and I'm like, I'm not going to do all this, so I just, I'll speak into here, and I've learned how to do that. And I have one, it was, I think, four days ago that I was driving, driving and doing it with the, with the audio in the beginning and all that. I figured it out. So there's a part towards the end, you hear the blinker going, so. <laughs> and you still used your blinker. Yes, I did. Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming out today. I really appreciate it. And I'm here to answer any questions, so thanks. Thank you for listening to the Preeminence Podcast. Subscribe to hear powerful interviews and insights each week automatically downloaded the moment they go live. Share this episode with your team, your friends, and post it on social media. Let us know your comments and suggestions for the show at m at ascend.net. That's the letter m at asynd.net. dot